It's day 14, actually. I need. <laughs> I belched. No, I think you just unleashed a demon. <laughs> That's some of my better work, I will admit. I can't open this. My nails are too long. I open all of my cans with my teeth. You're asking a lot of me here. So then just open it with your teeth. Don't make me regret letting you have that. Why? I'm going to be up at like 2 in the morning. You were up at 2 in the morning anyway. Not last night. I was out. I don't know what time you fell asleep, but you were being loud talking to Jordan. I haven't had one of these since I was 16 because... I didn't sleep for two days because my body is so small and my dad told me no more but I'm making an adult decision and Tyler is letting me so we're gonna see if I ever sleep again I mean I used to drink eight of those a day when I worked at McDonald's in high school Okay. I would go on my lunch break and buy two four packs and I would drink all of them during the second half of my shift. That is you, not me. <laughs> I was your size, if not smaller, in high school. You were destined to be a moron. Hey, no. Now, anyway, shut up and let me talk so I can finish this and watch the football game. <laughs> ah! You're messing up my hair. <laughs> It's stuck. <laughs> well, get it out before I start reading my story. So it's day 14, okay? And I have a story from Jenny K. Her YouTube is The Wisconsin Files, and I strongly suggest you go subscribe because her videos are amazing. I get excited, so excited when I see that she uploaded because her videos entertain me so much. <laughs> <laughs> there it went. I'm afraid to drink milk. So, I think I have been fascinated by the paranormal since as far back as I can remember. The prospect of something supernatural lurking beyond the veil, I believe, fascinates most of us. I'm your typical run of the mill paranormal investigator. I do my utmost to debunk or disprove a lot of the oddities I run across. About 80% of the time, I can give you a logical explanation for an unexplained occurrence, but there are those handful of cases where I have been left completely baffled. Today, I would like to share one of those cases with you, a story that left me with an uneasy feeling that has lingered to this very day. The year was 2008. I was fairly new at the whole ghost hunting bit. But with a group of friends on a hot July night, we set off to explore an abandoned country home. The night was particularly humid, the type of humidity that leaves you gasping for air. If you are familiar with Wisconsin, then you know exactly what I mean. The road we turn onto that brings us to the old decrepit farmhouse was an old beaten down dusty path. It takes you into this thick wooded area and amongst the wild vines and thicket lies the old eight bedroom farmhouse. This place was massive with two grand spiraling staircases. One was in the kitchen, almost like a servant's entrance, but with much grandeur. And the other was a breathtaking giant wide set of stairs that wrapped into a pointed turn and led the rest of the way up to the second floor. The first floor was grand. A stained glass window from the landing of the steps let in a most glorious multicolor light. Almost ominous, the sprawling layout made you pause. A huge fireplace sat in the foyer and another was in stone in the living area. And another vintage fireplace sat in the kitchen as well as the dining room. A massive burn hole separated you from one side of the first floor to another. The stairs remained intact. Sadly, this lovely home was partially destroyed by a fire. I will relay the details as follows. Sometime back, maybe the early 60s or so, according to the history of this place, a family of 12 once resided in these walls. By all accounts, they seemed a happy one, but as most tragic tales go, not all was as it seemed. 
The husband and wife ran into financial trouble and the husband was feeling overwhelmed by the amount of care and money needed to provide for such a large family. This led him to a breakdown. One day as the children arrived home from school, they noticed that their father had seemed agitated. Not wanting to further upset him, they opted to keep out of sight in their upstairs bedrooms. While doing their homework, the children could smell a strong smoke waft up the stairs. At first thinking that perhaps something had gone wrong with the fluke, the older kids came down to investigate. They would begin to panic as they realized it was their father lighting the home on fire with all the kids upstairs. Quickly thinking, the older kids rounded everyone up and got them to safety. Surprisingly, the father was still alive when the fire department arrived. He was charged with arson and some other offenses. He wouldn't serve prison time, however. Instead, he spent the remainder of his days locked up in a mental institution until his death in the 80s. Now we have context of the history here. Let's get back to the story. So as we all stumbled into the first floor, we headed straight for the steps, eager to explore the upstairs. The night was beginning to fall, and we had one dismal flashlight that wasn't providing much light at all. The upstairs looked as if it came to life straight out of a horror movie. The long, foreboding hallway aligned with such an eerily symmetrical doors one lonely window directly at the end illuminating the space with the first bits of moonlight. I was now feeling a bit uneasy. It was up here that we all began smelling what we thought at first was burnt popcorn. It took a few seconds to realize we were smelling smoke from a fire. We began running down the set of other stairs, convinced this place has somehow started on fire once more. Rationalizing that it was probably an electrical situation, we made it into the kitchen on the opposite side of the giant burned out hole. We smelled the smoke strongly, but there was no smoke. In fact, the house fell so silent, it was becoming deafening. It was then we felt the coldest breeze brush past us, wafting that smoke smell around. Then the loudest footsteps started hitting the stairs behind us, ascending to the next floor. There wasn't a soul on those steps. We all decided to get the hell out of there as fast as we could. Entering the car, we all saw a light go on in one of the upstairs bedrooms. My friend begins to peel out on the gravel driveway and onto the old dirt path. The light remaining on as we gained distance and it faded into the blackness. I then recalled that there had been no electricity in that house. The place had no power for the last decade or so. I'm not sure what exactly happened there, but I know it was something I could never logically explain. It was my first real encounter with the unknown, and one that I still remember as vividly as the day it happened. Thanks for taking the time to read my tale. I think some things are just better left unknown. That's freaking wicked. I'm starting to feel shaky. That sounds really spooky. Like, if that ever happened to me, I don't know what I'd do. I'd probably be traumatized. And you'd probably laugh. Yeah. What do you... What? Personally, I'm not leaving if that kind of stuff's happening. I'm looking around and investigating. <laughs> Lights coming on in a building with no electricity. I'm finding the source. That has happened to me before. A light turning on when there's no electricity. That 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 is, like, one of the creepiest things that could ever happen. But I hope you liked that story. All of her social media will be linked down below. So go and subscribe to everything. And like and comment and subscribe on this video to see more. And if you have a scary story that you want read on here, type it up to me and send it to my email that is in the description and I will read it. What do you think of the story? One out of 10. Uh, give it, I give it a 10 out of 10 for no other reason than the fact that it was very, very descriptive and well written. <laughs> well, on that note, we'll be back tomorrow for another spooky video. You've been warned.